Hi YouTubers, it's Colin here from Tamir Truck Building. In this particular episode I'm going to show you how to use function sequences in Sound Teacher. And this will work in either the BIA SFR1 or the BIA USMRC3. A friend sent me a roof bar off a wrecker and asked if I could do a feature on function sequences. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up a function sequence to make the LEDs flash, just like the real thing. So what do you need? Well obviously a roof bar, uh, you may have the Tamiya type or another make, providing you've got access to all the individual LEDs, uh, not the PCB type. You'll need uh, either a BR SFR1 or a USMRC3 and you'll need access to the sound teacher software depending which model you've got. I'm using a bench test layout which you've probably already noticed and I'm just going to go through all the different parts with you. Okay here's my setup on the on the bench which is as I say is just a, a test. Um, I've got the radio at the back here which is Radio Link AT10 and the R12DS receiver which is connected via SBUS to the SFR1 because of SBUS digital commands there's only one connection between the receiver and there. I've added a few other bits which aren't relative to what we're doing today but it just makes it look like a, a normal setup. I've plugged in a steering servo and a gear servo, the speaker over there, I've got a volume control here, standby switch and here we've got the KUSB2 module which connects to the PC battery. I haven't got a motor on there at the moment. Here's one of the two output ribbon cables that can be connected. I'm using just this one and the only thing that's plugged into the outputs at the moment are the three groups of LEDs. So let's backtrack a little and look at the basics of this project. All LEDs need to be individually wired with the correct resistors. In this particular case I'm using 240 ohm resistors because I'm using a 7.2 volt NIMH battery. Here's my project. You'll see the LEDs are wired together in three groups and all positives are wired together. Just a reminder the B units are negative switching, so all of the output ports are where your negative wires go and use pins 9 or 10 on the SFR1 for your positive leads. As you can see here I've used output ports 1, 3 and 5, it's just a test. Have a look at the circuit diagrams in your beer manual if you're unsure how to wire. So what's a function or sequence? Or macro they all mean the same thing it's basically just a set of instructions one two three four or more which are all grouped together and activated by one command so we've looked at the roof bar and we've looked at the layout here what we're going to do now is move over to the PC and look at the sound teacher programming here we have the sound teacher software for the SFR1. The one for the USMRC3 looks pretty similar. When you open it by default it usually opens on the engine sound tab. We go to configuration and we go to this one here called function sequences. You'll note that there are eight tabs which means that you can create up to a maximum of eight tab eight sorry eight functions that can be called within the program. Here are where you the steps that you tell it what to do. Over here you have another few tools that will allow you to either loop um, what you're trying to do, tell it when to stop and start, and so on and so forth. All the usual stuff down the bottom here we'll be using afterwards which is the transfer project data. 
I started with this one here in sequence two. Now let me just take something out of here. There we go. Here's the first of three um, simulated light beacon flashes that I've done. Um, and I'll show you all three of them at the end. So there's one in, se in sequence two slot, one in sequence three and one in sequence four. Let's start with sequence two. Down here you'll see I've got output one, output three, output five. Now you may recall from the pictures that I put the wires for the three groups of LEDs into outputs one, three and five. Okay, so that's what you're referring to here within the function. You're telling it to address output one, which is the first group of lights. This column here says on off. I've clicked to on. So what that's going to do when we call this function, the first thing it's going to do is going to turn on any lights that are connected to output one. To the right of it here you'll see duration 0.1 seconds. This is a variable. I'll just use a drop down as you can see it can be varied quite considerably from microseconds right the way up to several minutes if you want. Um, and I've got it set to 0.1 of a second, not 0.10s meaning seconds. Now that doesn't mean that it's on for 0.1 of a second. What it means is that the next line or the next step in the process will begin a tenth of a second after that one is called. That is not the length of time that that's on for. So output one gets called after a tenth of a second the next line comes which says turn out put one off. So if you follow it through so far it's put the light on and then after a tenth of a second it turned it off again. And then after five tenths of a second, five, five tenths, five hundredths of a second, five hundredths of a second, output three is turned on. And then after a tenth of a second, output three is turned off. And then after, what is it on? It's, it is five tenths of a second, isn't it? No, five hundredths of a second, I'm getting confused here. Output five comes on. And then after a tenth of a second, output five goes off. So what effectively we've got there is one comes on, goes off. Three comes on, goes off. Five comes on, goes off. So if you were to run this sequence now, you'd get flash, 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 and that would be it. And that's where over here, there's a little radial button comes in handy called loop, and it'll change the colour to green, and you've got loop once, or loop with an intermediate stop. All we're interested in, in the one in the middle, loop. You can control which items here actually loop, or well, we want the whole lot to loop. So in other words, it will keep looping and keep doing on, 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 until we call the same sequence again, which will stop it. So that's a very simple one of doing lights on, lights off. Here's another one. All I've done here is swap the outputs around. I've got output three, then one, then five. It doesn't matter which order you do it in. Same again, on, off, on, off, on, off. But this time I've reduced the amount of time that they're actually on. So the flash is that much quicker. So you will notice the difference between one and two. Again, it's set to loop. Then the third one I've got here is a little bit more complex look. You'll notice in fact there are 18 lines to this one. And I don't know how many lines the program will allow you to have, but I've had up to 20 lines and it still takes them no problem at all. The whole lot's in green, which again tells us that whatever's in there is going to loop. And what I've done here is I've done three lines for each output. Let me just go back to the start so we can look at it. Output 1, on off. Output 1, on off. Output 1, on off. So that's, in other words, output 1 is going to go flash, flash, flash before it moves to output 3, which will do the same thing, flash, flash, flash. 
and then it moves on to output 5, flash, 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 and then the whole lot repeats itself. So you've got da 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 like a different type of flash. You know, it's, there's endless creativity. You can play with which ones come on first, how long they come on for, um, and how long they stay off. But there's, there's three sequences. If you're new to it, start off with a simple one, building blocks. Stick with that one that I've shown there in sequence two, which is just using each of the outputs on and off, on and off, on and off. And make sure you loop it. So OK, we've done that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check it out on the test rig. I have already transferred the project to the SFR one, so I'm not going to bother to show you that. But if you hadn't at this particular point, you would click on transfer project data and wait till these functions have been sent over. And I'm ahead of myself because I've just forgotten one thing here, or nearly forgot it anyway, and that is that we now have to assign that to some channels. Because it's alright having the function sequences there, but how are we going to call them? Well, I've set them up on props 3 and 4. Now, prop 3 is the left stick that moves left and right. And I've put the function in this one here, short in position, which means that when I move the left stick to the left for one and a half seconds and let go, it will come on. Do it again, it'll go off. On the opposite side, I've got function sequence 4. So if I move it that way, function sequence 4 will come on. Move it again, function sequence 4 will go off. Then on the other prop, which is the one that runs up and down, the one side I've got an engine sound on at the moment, so it just sounds realistic. I like the sound of the engine. <laughs> and on the other side, I've fitted function sequence 2. So that when that lever is moved to the up position for one and a half seconds, that function will be called. So sorry, I nearly forgot that bit. You've got the two things you've got to do are a design your functions and then b you've got to assign them to a prop channel. Once they're on a prop channel, send it to your um, to, to your to your unit, the SFR one or the USMRC three, and try it out. So let's test out our three new flashing beacon functions. I've connected the battery to the SFR1. I've turned my transmitter on. I'll just turn the standby switch now for the BA unit. See so it's responded, the lights have come on. First thing I want to do is just put on the engine sound. Because I like the engine sound, you don't have to have it running. I just like the engine sound. And it's a it's an audible sort of thing that tells you that it's working. Anyway, back to the three functions. Here comes function number one that we've done. Here comes function number two. And here comes function number three. There you are. Three alternative flashing function sequences in the BRSFR1 using seven LEDs. So there you are then, the power of the beer system, only limited by your creativity. I hope you enjoyed this short video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.